Hello, I'm Luke O'Neill, and here I am in my lab in the Trinity Biomedical Sciences Institute. So this week on my COVID-19 update, we're talking about the end game. Now you might think it's too soon, it's very tentative, but scientists are now wondering what will this end game look like? The reason is vaccination, of course, and Israel is telling us the vaccines are working in spades. Tremendous news, there are 94% protection. So now we're beginning to imagine what the end game might look like, and it will look like the following, we think. So once vaccination is widespread, we'll still have to restrict inward travel into countries. That's a price worth paying if you think about it, to have freedom. Now freedom actually will mean reopening of things. It will allow events to come back, large scale events can start happening. But as I say, the price might be a restriction in international travel. The main reason for that is these variants, they still are a concern. If we get protection in our own countries, we don't want variants coming in for a while anyway, until other countries are vaccinated. And that's the last part of this current proposal, and that is we should give away the excess vaccines that we've got. Canada has ordered nine vaccines per person, the US has seven, the UK has six, and the EU has five. Give away the excess to the developing world, because then vaccinate those countries as well. So they're asking now for every country to get ready to give vaccines away, strange as it may seem. If we do all those things in a sort of six to nine month period, we can begin to see things coming back to normal. Another reason why the end game might be in sight, and now we can consider it, is the numbers are looking good globally. There's a 17% decrease in cases last week globally. That's the 15th week in a row that cases have gone down in the world. There's also been a 10% decrease in the deaths rate over the past week. The second week in a row we're seeing deaths falling globally. These are good signs. Now why is this? It's partly the vaccination campaign that's just beginning of course. But secondly, public health measures are working in many countries as well. The third is there may well be a season the last respect to this. Now we're coming out of winter and therefore numbers start to fall all over Europe for instance. But this tells us the ship has turned around and we now must plan for the next six to twelve month period in terms of this end game. One very interesting study as well that came out literally just this week is about iron and the immune system. Now we know iron's a, a mineral, we need it for all kinds of things in our bodies, but guess what? Your immune system needs iron too. And a very compelling study shows iron deficiency makes vaccines less effective. Now it wasn't COVID specifically, it was rubella, influenza. If you're iron deficient, those vaccines don't really work. What this tells us is you must be well nourished. Let's face it, your whole body needs nourishment, but your immune system needs iron just like it needs vitamin D, for example. And then it does link to COVID, because we've known there for a number of months, if you're iron deficient, you do much worse with COVID. It predicts severity. And that's because your immune system, again, isn't working as well if you're iron deficient. The message then is very clear. Have a good balanced diet. Maybe take an iron supplement. Be careful, of course, with the amount, just the regular amount that's recommended. And that will help your immune system. So iron joins things like vitamin D as a real immune system enabler. So you can hear about these stories and more on my weekly COVID-19 update with Pat Kenny on Newsline.